speaker volume because I got a very special guest on the show tonight on Mike in the Night and I've been begging him to come on and share his wealth of knowledge. And here he is, Simon, uneducated economist. Hold on, don't talk. There's his channel right here, Uneducated Economist. I'm going to leave a link in the chat for you guys to make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. He's at 2609 subscribers. Let's see if we get him to 3,000 subs by the end of this month um, or more. And he's got uh, a very firm understanding of what is going on when it comes to treasuries when it comes to stocks when it comes to buybacks when it comes to days and that and 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 market closures and openings and dividends and uh, whatever and he does it in a way where everyone could understand it and that's what i like he's a very hard-working guy let me introduce from astoria oregon where the goonies was filmed simon <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, Mike. I'm glad to be here tonight. Really happy to be here. Oh, man, it's such a pleasure to have you on. Go ahead, buddy, talk. What? Okay, let me just ask you a basic question. What motivated yeah. you to start Uneducated Economist? Wow, what motivated, motivated me to start Uneducated Economist? Well, I guess it would probably started... Um, well, I guess probably my quest started back in the uh, 07 housing crisis when I uh, when I came pretty close to losing my house. I started punching into the computer, you know, what's going on? Mortgage-backed securities, credit default swaps. I didn't know any of this stuff, you know. I would sit there and I'd watch CNBC and they would speak and I would understand the words like I knew the definitions of the words, but they would talk in such a way that it sounded like code. And I just never understood these things that would just kind of just kind of go past me even if I would just sit there and really try and pay attention. I just still couldn't get it. So I just went to Google and I just started punching in there. What are credit default swaps? What are mortgage backed securities? What is the Federal Reserve? What are, you know, what's fractional reserve banking? And I just kept doing that. And even still today, I, I ask questions to myself all the time. Then I go to Google and, and start punching it in there and, and finding out. So every day I try and learn a little bit more about what's going on out there. And uh, yeah, you know, so yeah, treasury yields, they're, they're, the, uh, they're the thing that I've been keeping my eye on lately. Tell us, you know, what, explain explain to a lot of the uh, first timers uh, that are yeah. getting into understanding the markets. What is a treasury yield? How is it attractive? And when is a safe time to buy? Remember, guys. Remember, we are we are not giving any financial advice. We don't know anything. We're just talking. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I am. I am probably when it comes to market timing, I am probably like the worst market timer in the world. So I don't even try and give like investing advice and stuff like that. But I do like to look at these. Uh, at some of these things and then try and explain to at least from what I see in it and um, yeah a lot of people think that uh, that I kind of break it down and make it a little more simpler for so what is a bond well you know what are bonds and bond yields a bond is real simple a bond is a loan right I mean if you in that's and that's the simplest way to put it and and bonds typically have a short-term duration to long-term durations right and a lot like you know if you're buying a house and if you're taking out a long-term rate you're gonna pay a higher interest rate and if you take out a short term like 15 years you're gonna take pay a shorter or a lesser of an interest rate for that and bonds are very similar so typically on a short term you're gonna pay a low interest rate and on a high term you're gonna pay a higher interest rate to it and these are what basically is the security behind loans because they're the most well they're the most guaranteed most secure loans out there because they're backed by the US government right so so that's what so that's what the basic simple simple explanation of a bond is you know and then uh, you know what's what's big talk right now is a lot about the uh, the bond yields, right? The the yield curve, right? So a lot of people don't understand quite what that yield curve is, and that's where that short term to long term rate is, where you have like you know it'll start off with a shorter term and then it'll kind of curve into a longer term, right? Mm -hmm. Well, when that starts to flatten, it means that the short term is starting to catch up to the long term rates as far as what they're willing to pay, and in right now what we have is we have very um, small inversions happening inside of this inside of this yield curve, which would typically be short term to long term. What we end up having is we have sections inside of there that are now paying higher interest rates on the shorter term than they are on the longer term. Yes. And and what this is doing is 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 is, is, is it's causing a fear inside of the market. So basically, when you have a one year treasury that's demanding a higher interest rate than a than a say a, a five year or seven year treasury. 
what you have is you have investors who are very nervous about the market that year out. They don't want to tie their money up during that time. See, if they give that money up and buy that bond, then they're going to be tying their money up. And they're like, man, what if an asset could become more, you know, drops in price and it would be a better purchase than this treasury that I got. Right. So if you're going to have me buy this treasury, I want a higher interest rate. And that's what causes those interest rates to go up inside of the inside of that yield curve is because it's because of the nervousness of investors for that period of time. Yes. So when it basically inverts, what it shows is it shows a signal that, hey, this three year bond's more attractive than the seven year. And then people start to scratch their heads and wonder, wait a minute, why am I going to tie up 10 G's in, in, in a seven year bond that's going to pay less than the three month? So exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, and exactly. And so what you end up having is that if you is is banks end up, you know, and I'm not like some some banking guy. Right. So I don't know anything about banking business. I don't know. Any, but I do know that these guys borrow short, you know, and, and lend it out for long. Right. So they borrow sh short term rates that are less interest rates, loan it out to you for longer term at a higher interest rate. They make the money in between. Right. Mm -hmm. So if they cannot borrow this short term interest, you know, at the at a rate that they can lend it out for a longer term interest, then they can't make any money in there. So what ends up happening is, is they don't loan the money out and you start having a credit freeze where all these banks get fearful because they don't want to they don't want to loan money to anybody else because they're afraid that, you know, that they won't be able to to have the money on hand. So, boy, did I kind of mess that up there a little bit? They're, they're basically, they won't be able to borrow the money at a short term rate to lend it out for longer. So they don't want to loan it out, right? They want to hold on to those funds until right. they can get an interest rate that pays more. Yeah. You know? Right. Of course. Well, it's actually more attractive, right? Okay, guys, right. people just joining into the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Uneducated Economist. I'm going to leave a link right now to his uh, channel in the chat. I know we're on a, my backup channel, so we already got people coming in which is really nice and i couldn't believe how fast this channel picked up the second they flagged a three-year-old video talking about telling people not to buy in sydney australia uh th from three years ago too with no music with no backup stuff with no you know with no uh i, I don't know how to say this with no uh uh reason for them to to, to delete the video so they right. had to give me some sort of uh um, I don't know how to say it here. Uh, a, a warning, I guess, in their in their way of uh, doing uh, business when it comes to, uh, I don't know, uh, flexing their muscles is what it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that that just it just kind of blows me away that they would you know that they would do that. It's just, I mean, I guess it doesn't. I shouldn't be shocked by this kind of stuff, but you know, I mean, when you're giving your opinions, you know, and you're stating it out there for your friends to hear, and they want to hear that opinion, who are they to tell you? You know, who are they to to stop that? And I don't know. Yeah. So okay, tell us. So the inversion <laughs> we talked about, we talked about the basics of a bond. So um, you were also talking about the market, uh, the movement in the markets especially the losses we've been experiencing here uh, well in the United States and 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 most of parts like the Japanese market too was taking a bit of a beating a week or two ago and so yep. did the Chinese markets about a month ago they got a huge uppercut and everything was in the red where do you see ha what do you see happening in Q1 of 2019 well um Personally, I think that the uh, the Federal Reserve is going to continue to try and raise interest rates. I think they're going to continue to try and just ra raise them simply to try and have some sort of ammo to 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 combat the next recession. Um, I think by that time it will be too little, too late. I think they have way too much on their balance sheet right now, and you know this this raising of interest rates is probably going to do too much damage to the economy for them to to hold out very long um and then they'll they'll turn around they'll turn around the quantitative tightening go back into quantitative easing and yeah they'll fire up the printing presses again Can the I only problem i feel that this time is that it's not going to turn out very well for them because i just don't feel that the the world is going to buy into it again i think they'll probably um start to abandon the dollar and and we're gonna end up running into Probably um, a lot like what Peter Schiff says in, in running into like an inflationary recession. You know? Okay, you brought up a really good, a, uh, a really good, quite a really good uh, discussion piece there. Uh, dropping the dollar, I see. Mm -hmm. I see personally. Yeah. I see India. I see China, Russia, uh, Brazil. 
I see a lot of countries dropping the U.S. Uh, uh, the, the the greenback. Yeah, yeah. What do you and think, is, in your opinion? Yeah, yeah, and that's something that actually started, you know, quite a while ago. The BRICS nations, you know, and in those in those guys, they actually set up the uh, institutions and the basically everything to take over a, a world currency, and they just set it up in a very small manner. And what that is is a wedge. Right. And and once they drive that wedge, it just takes small tappings over and over again to eventually drive that wedge through. And so that's what's going on now. Um, they don't need to do it all at once. They don't need to make it a, a you know, a, a big spectacle of things. They can just literally tap that wedge every day, just a little bit and just continue to abandon the dollar and get other countries to abandon the dollar. You know, the these countries that are that have taken on these U.S. bases all over the world, those U.S. bases there are there to protect the shipping channels. Well, they don't have to be occupied by the U.S., right? They can be occupied by anybody. And those shipping channels, they can be taken over by anybody in the world. You know, they don't have to be American protected. So, you know, we're sitting in a situation here where we're really pissing the world off, you know, and, you know, that's not a good idea when, you know, we're borrowing the money from everybody else. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, uh, the abandonment of the U, of the, uh, the, the petrodollar, the U.S. dollar, the greenback, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, um, is, uh, is, is not on every country's first prime directive to get done in Q1 of 2019. I think we need to hold back from jumping into war. We got China flexing its muscles to Taiwan today, and we got lots of stuff happening over there, and with this, mm -hmm. the South China Sea. But so now Q1. Banking. Do you see? Do you see a runoff? Do you see in Q1 or Q2 of 2019 a runoff on the banking system where people start removing their money like they did in Cyprus four years ago? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's going to come a moment where there's where we are going to run into a liquidity crisis where pretty much people are going to need money to pay off their debts and they won't be able to find it anywhere and they are going to start selling assets for any price and they are going to try and get cash as much as they can get their hands on and yeah if they have to take it out of the banks if they have to sell off all their you know all their possessions whatever they got to do in order to get a hold of it because there's not going to be cash flowing through the system you know that's what the money that's what the debt is that's where that's where all the money is is with all this debt and as they take this debt away they're taking the money away from it too so if you got cash like literally like paping folded dollars like in your possession you're going to be in the better position when those banks don't open up because you're going to be the only one who has it, and cash is king at that point um you know regardless of of the value of it you know being a fiat currency and all that if there's an economic crisis going on cash is cash is always going to be the winner of it now in the long run i don't see that you know being being the place you want to be but definitely you know over the next you know Probably a couple of years, cash is going to be probably, you know, savers for the first time are going to be benefited, you know. Um, now, that's that's I guess that's only, of course, if the if the Fed does go down the path of raising those interest rates. Now, like I said, I, I really think that by that point, the pain is going to be too much and they're going to turn around and start and start easing again. But if they don't, then, yeah, for the first time, you know, people are going to actually understand what it is to put money in a bank and get a savings out of it, get a return. You know, right. That's yeah. that's something that Americans don't know, you know, yeah. at all. I always bring up I always bring up ING Direct save your money 5.5% on your savings uh back in the in the 90s 5.5% man on a million dollars that's $55,000 in interest people didn't know what that was back at the time but they took our wealth away and they artificially lowered interest rates to yeah. bail out the banks in 2007 now yeah. people don't so in human like okay in human history, we've done this before, okay, during the Roman era when the the Romans would put less gold in their gold coins and yep. they would still get the same size coin, but people would get less gold in their coin. So yep. that's how they deflated their own currency and pretty much destroyed it. But a lot of people don't understand how good it was to have a savings account and a bank that would pay you to have money in their account. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, there was there was some banks. The Bank of America was offering seven percent at one point back in the eighties. Seven point eight percent in eighty four. That's a lot of juice. If you have a million bucks, you have a million bucks. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I mean, can you imagine actually being a kid? You know, where your parents would tell you, you know, it's just like, hey, you put this kid, you know, give him give this kid a savings account. By the time he graduates high school, he can actually have a car or do something with that money. 
nowadays, you know, you can't put your money in there. It's not going to buy anything by the time he graduates high school. It's going to be worth less. You know, and just like you were saying about the Romans and the coins, you know, the the nice thing about what the Romans were doing when, as far as governments and, and, and depleting the value of those coins is they got to spend them at face value. Right. right. See, everybody else out there had, you know, the government, the, the people who, who issued the coins, they got to spend it and got full face value for it. Everybody else had to work with depleted dollars or a depleted coin at that point. Right. You know, and the same thing happens today. So when the government prints up this money and spends it, they get to spend it at current face value. By the time we get it, it's depleted and we, you know, we have to work that much harder for it. You know? Right. So things haven't changed much. Well, know? buying power, buying power is going, uh, buying power is, is, is you know, uh, back in the early 80s, you'd go down to Tijuana, Mexico with the 100 US. Oh, man, you'd be partying. Oh, yeah, yeah. You go down Good there with the $100 yeah. US, you can't even buy beer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't get you anywhere, really. I mean, $100 is, uh, you know, I mean, they're like $20 bills used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think, I, I don't know if you know this, but there was a macro, macroeconomics in Mexico five presidents or four presidents ago in Mexico. Do you know what he did to fix that problem? He dropped a bunch of zeros off the money? Yes! Yes! <laughs> Somebody that knows this. Yes, that's exactly what he did. And that that yeah, yeah. gutted the economy for a good five years, but it kind of resuscitated it to a point where uh, a can of Coke in Mexico is 10 pesos, and 10 right. pesos is equivalent to one U.S. dollar. Right. So it, the buying yeah. power kind of was at balance. Now it's like 18 pesos. For a can of yeah, yeah, because I remember I went down there when I was a, when I was a kid, and I remember I had like these two thousand pesos, you know, and I'm like, whoa, look at this note, you know, and then yeah, I could buy like a Coca, I couldn't even buy a Coca Cola with it, you know, I was yeah. just like, I mean, it was like it was nothing, but yeah, yeah, so they dropped those zeros to try and uh, try and bring the currency, so you weren't dealing with such a big number anymore, but it, yeah. you know, I mean, it it. It, it works, I guess, psychologically, but, you know, it doesn't work ultimately in the end. It's the same same currencies, same problems. They just, you know, start over again. So what do you uh, what do you see coming when it comes? We talked about banks. We talked about where do you see stocks headed? I mean, do you see oil up or down? Do you see gold? Gold's been on been falling the last three days. Yeah. Yeah. Gold's, gold's been on a downfall. You, usually mm. gold will go up when when the mar- when when the markets are taking a crap, but but gold is still, you know, I think it's the powers to be up top are keeping gold and silver devaluized. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, you know, there's a huge talk about the uh the gold uh, gold and silver manipulation that's happening, you know. I remember like I've been buying silver a long time and I remember during the uh during it was like I think it was what probably 2011 or 12 when they had the uh, crash JP Morgan buy silver. Do you remember that? You know where they were going to try and run silver up to five hundred dollars and and crush JP Morgan because they supposedly had this huge short position that they wouldn't be able to cover. Uh, yep. I don't know if you're corner of the that. market. Oh. They wanted to corner the market. They lost their shirts. Yeah, and uh, and well, yeah, of course, if you know, I mean, what ended up happening, of course, is that you know silver ran up to about fifty dollars an ounce, was about ready to reach its new all time high. And they started hammering it, and more paper silver started hitting the market, and they started dropping the prices down, and it dwindled all the way from fifty dollars all the way down to what? I think it hit somewhere around fourteen, yes. fourteen dollars an ounce a couple of years ago, or so. So, yeah, this obviously is not a natural market that took place, you know, with 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 this massive rise and then the unnatural fall that it took place and then stayed as low as it has. I mean, all this money got printed up and it flowed into the bonds and the stock market and it flowed into real estate, but it didn't touch precious metals. Didn't even come close to it. Mm-hmm. And the reason why? They don't loan money. They don't loan, well, I mean, I guess somebody could buy it on margin, but they don't, like, you know, the average person doesn't go out and take a bunch of loans out to buy gold. You know, no. if they did, then, you know, price of gold would be hundreds of thousands of dollars an ounce. You know? Right. Well, here's the thing. I'll give you an example. This is how much paper we have on earth, uh, uh, silver certificates, and this is how much silver we have. So we can't cover the actual silver physicality if everybody calls for it at the same time. And that's where Deutsche Bank is in a lot of problems today because a lot yeah. of people are asking, where's my gold? And Deutsche Bank right. is sending them away. Yeah. You know, and yeah, you know, in a lot of countries ask for the gold. I mean, I don't know if you heard the story about Germany asking for their gold a few years back, and it took them what nine, ten months to get uh, the first shipment. It wasn't even all of it; it was just a piece of it. A piece of it, back. and they weren't even allowed into the Fed Federal Reserve to go audit it. Yeah, to to go say, hey, we don't even. Yeah, you don't even have to ship it. Let's just go look at it. Let me just go put my hands on it, right? You know, and say that it's there. They wouldn't even allow them to do that, right? So yeah, there's obviously, you know, I mean. 
you know, I mean, there's no reasons why Germany couldn't get their goal back if they truly had it, right? So what they had to do, they probably had to go off into the market to buy it, right? And 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 then send it to Germany. And that's and that's probably the reason it is because I think even Germany says, well, where are the gold bars that we gave you? You know, you gave us back different bars. You know, yeah, you gave us back in the, the the amount of gold that you said you would, but they didn't come back as the bars that we had given you. You melted them down and made new bars. So you know, where is what that? About, what about the gold with tungsten steel? Inside yeah, of. yeah, and then some of the bars that they cut open, finding tungsten steel in it. You know that those those stories never really seem to mature too much. You know, you hear about them and then that's it; it's gone. You know, is there is there tons of gold sitting in vaults out there that really just is full of tungsten? I mean, it's you know, there's I mean, there's articles written about it years ago, but you know, nobody nobody knows. It's because they don't do the audits. You know, it's if they audit it, they would know. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure there's gonna be I'm pretty sure there's gonna be. Uh some sort of technology they have they could tell or they just don't want to talk about it or bring it up or ca- uh, cause mass chaos in the markets because oh. this 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 will will set a butterfly effect in the uh, in the markets easy you could see the manipulation of gold with tungsten steel affecting housing and affecting the price of food that's how bad it oh. could get yeah yeah absolutely you know i mean you know, you, uh, throughout history, you know, for 5,000 years, gold and silver have always been money, you know, and it's only been this short amount of time that they haven't been. And you can see the chaos that is that has ensued since then. Um, you know, whether gold and silver actually become the money again in the future, I don't know. But I know it's a hell, heck of a good place to store your wealth, you know, especially a good chunk of it. Um, you know, when prices are down like this, it, it, you know, there's the downside risk of buying silver and gold right now is so minute, you know, I mean, considering that, you know, how inflated everything else is out there and the uncertainty that's going on out there, silver's kind of sitting down there going, Hey, you know, um, I'm unloved, unnoticed, you know, come on and check me out. Do you remember, do you remember that guy that invented, it looked like a card like this, like a typical credit card and inside it had little pouches of gold and then if you wanted a 20 denomination, you punch out two of them and you pay them in gold. And if you wanted $50, you punch it out of the card and give them real gold. Do you remember that? That was circling yeah. the news and they killed it right away. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all these great ideas that they have for, for you know, bringing the gold and silver back into the commerce, you know, and being used as a viable money. They get smashed right away, you know. and. Even like I ask uh, a lot of my friends and family, you know, if if you know they've ever heard of being able to use money in as or gold and silver as money, and most of them don't even have an idea of how that would even work, you know. And I tell them, well, look, you know, gold money has these neat little credit cards, and you can spend your gold right here with a debit card. Mm-hmm. So there's you know there's ways of being able to save your money and carry your money in gold and silver. And, and not have to carry the physical thing. You could spend it with debit cards. I mean, people are facilitating these trades now. So, you know. How does it make you feel that Russia and China and 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 uh, Brazil, a couple of countries out there, Portugal, have uh, actual phys- – Iran. Uh, um, Libya had one of the biggest gold reserves in the world till it was destabilized. Yeah. Like – how does how does it make you feel that economic wise that it's not on your shores and they're so secretive about it? But when they talk to the Russians to see their gold reserves, oh come on in, bring your cameras, take a look at this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they they check the Portuguese gold reserves because the Portuguese found ton of gold in Brazil, and I mean they've they've made they've have huge reserves on the Lisbon, and you see these tons and tons of gold under Portugal, and but you see it. But then when you look at countries like the U.S., Italy. Uh, what was it? Uh, Japan, other countries, they don't want you seeing their reserves. Right. What's the big secret when other countries are like, come on, bring your cameras. I got to show this to the world. W- what is the big secret? Do they have it or do they not? Because it's pretty obvious they don't when they don't want no one to see it. What's it going to do? Disappear if you look at it? Yeah. You know, and it's funny, even if they, you know, even with the amount that they do have, I mean, that they admit to what it would run the country for what, two or three months or something like that. I don't even, it's like the amount of gold that they even admit to that having is, is really insignificant to the amount of paper dollars that they have printed out. But you know, what is the big secret? I, I really don't know. Um, you know, you see Russia really bragging about the amount of precious metals they have, you know, but China, they're pretty secretive. You know, they say how much they have, but you know, there's plenty of people out there who have talked about how China is just not admitting to how much they have actually accumulated. And they are, you know, they are net importers of gold, not exporting any. 
So being the world's largest you know, gold producer, I think China is being pretty secretive themselves on how much they have. And I think they're doing it for for, you know, eventually probably world dominating reasons. You know, I mean, if the one who has all the gold is, you know, pretty much the king, you know, especially have, have during you, the fiat money crash. Right. What do you know about the, the pearl necklace around uh, India, uh, Malaysia, the bases that China has been building, lending them loans? These countries and then countries unable to pay back the loans and then China takes over their ports. Yeah. How, what do you think of that? What do you know of that? Well, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, short of like what you just said, that's, you know, that's pretty much what I've heard. But, you know, this kind of goes back for a long way. It's because really I was reading articles 10 years ago about how China was, you know, building roads and infrastructures and warehouses and, and mills and different things all over the all over the globe. You know, and, you know, it's kind of the same thing, you know, if these people can't pay them back, then guess who owns the roads, the mills and the warehouses, you know. And so, you know, this is something that China has been been doing, you know, pretty heavily for the I mean, at least from what I can tell for the last 10 years. You know? OK, I have a question from California here from Low Roller Scratcher. Mike, can you ask Simon, does he invest in Bitcoin? Yes, I do. I invest in Bitcoin, um, very, very small amounts. Um, and what I mean by that is that. You know, I, I do a, a couple of side hustles and I take a little piece of that side hustle and, and I participate in the cryptocurrency game. And the reason why I do that is because the more you do that, the more knowledge you are going to get gain from the cryptocurrency, you know, sphere out there. You know, you don't put your money towards something and just kind of ignore it. You put your money towards something and you pay attention to it. So that's why I, that's why I buy cryptos. I buy cryptos, I buy gold. I buy very small amounts of like stock stuff. You know, I, I buy some mining share kind of things that I'm that I kind of know. But I don't participate a whole lot in the uh, in the stock market itself. I'm more of a precious metals, Bitcoin and then um, really I'm trying to get out of debt. So I got some debt left over from a few years of making bad decisions. And, you know, so that's that makes it pretty easy for me. You know, I can just, you know, my extra money goes to paying off that debt as soon as I can, which I should be done here pretty soon. So good for you. I got yeah, a thanks. question here that was sent to me on Skype from Kathy says, uh, hi, Simon. I just subscribed to your channel. What are you, trends that will affect uh, uh, investors, particularly in America in 2019? Trends that are going to affect affect Americans, um, you know, I think it's probably the one that everybody's talking about. I think it's this IT. I think this, uh, you know, the Internet of Things, the automation of just about everything out there. This is going to be the major trend. Um, you know, everything is uh, everything is going to go on blockchain. Um, it's already starting to. Uh, you know, it's not just cryptocurrencies. Blockchain is a is is a fascinating fascinating technology, and it is you know whether you believe it in or not, it's taking place out there. It's it's starting to take over uh, the paper trails that that companies used to use. There, everything's going on blockchain now, and so once once the Internet of Things and once the automation starts kicking in and it gets onto the blockchain. You know, our lives are going to be looking a whole lot different than what they do now. Um, I couldn't even, I mean, it's its easy to let your mind kind of wander into fascination on some of these things. But it's, its I mean, I'm to be honest with you, I'm looking forward to the day that I can jump in a car and they'll take me to work. Mm -hmm. If I even have work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so um, the, I have another question here from Jose from Texas, Dallas, Texas to be exact. Is uh, the stock? Do the stock market signals? Would it uh, show whether Trump will stay or go? Um, to be honest with you, if the smart, if you know, if markets are, are in horrible turmoil, they're going to blame Trump for that, and he probably will miss out on the next election. Uh, that's that's just unfortunate. It's you know, I don't think any of I don't blame Trump for anything. I don't blame Obama for anything. I don't I don't blame presidential candidates. They they do steer directions, but I, I, I try not to focus blame on anything. I try and look at things the way they are, you know, as opposed to the way, you know, they should be because, you know, you get really frustrated trying to trying to create this world that should be as opposed to just kind of seeing things the way they are. And unfortunately for for Trump, you know, um, when he took on took on this this presidency, he he really did well in that first couple of years with the stock market running and everybody was just so happy and they had all this money and stuff. But then, of course, you know, it's the wealth effect. So as the markets start to 
start to fade away, you know, and, and these people are upset that they didn't cash out, they're going to they're going to blame Trump, you know, and they're, they're going to say, hey, this is your fault and we're going to look for somebody else. And, and unfortunately, it's it usually swings, you know, we have a pendulum, so it swings, you know, and, and you know, Trump was really extreme to one side, so it's going to swing to the other. And, and, you know, who knows what it's going to end up landing at. Um, you know, I kind of see a Bernie Sanders kind of style, you know, mm-hmm. something like that affecting the United States here. You know? Okay, we got and, we got a question from Cindy from Melbourne, Melbourne, <laughs> Aus- Melbourne Australia. Uh, do you see uh, sales or sell-offs on Apple stock? I just purchased a whack load of Apple stock uh, Friday. Do you see a, a, a sell-off or do you see them buying back stocks? Hmm. Um, yeah, you know, again, I'm a, I'm a terrible market timer, so mm-hmm. I would, <laughs> I mean, whatever I say, you probably should do the opposite of, but, uh, um, I honestly, I don't see the, uh, I see like, you know, you'll probably be finding some turnaround in the markets. You'll probably find that, you know, I have some good weeks or good months or something like that, but we're going to be on a downtrend in the markets for, you know, I'm assuming for, for quite some time. Um, again, this is all, this is all depending on the fed, you know, if the fed continues with the interest rate rising, you're going to see a downward in the market. And if they don't, then you'll see, you know, party time at the market again. Um, you know, the only problem with, with these things are, is that it, it's, it, it's it's hard to say you know how effective these things are going to be like their policy changes always take like months to to really kind of kick into gear so they'll make a decision now and everybody says oh look what it did to the market but really that decision doesn't take effect for another couple of weeks here you know it was more of just market sentiment that's moving the market so now the Fed can really like you know if they want to they can make the markets go up or down just by simply saying that they're going to raise or not raise interest rates I mean they got the they got the market at the reins really you know. I got a question here from Simon, f- from Simon, not huh? to, from Simon nice to, to Simon, Simon. <laughs> from from uh, from Skype here, and is from um, Welland, New Zealand, and he wants to ask, uh, how did we get? How did the American stock market get so bad, making it the ten, uh, making it the worst in ten years within a couple of months? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, I think a lot of it, it kind of has to do, again, back to those interest rates, you know. And if you notice, like, um, if you go and look at the Treasury yields, they they started to invert November 30th. Mm-hmm. OK, November 30th was the last day that there was no inversion going on inside of the Treasuries. Ever since then, every single day since November 30th, there has been some sort of inversion in the yield curve. Even if it was, you know, just a minute one basis point inversion, it was still an inversion and it was happening. And it's happened every single day since then. So that says a lot to me that these interest rates are are the, what's mainly affecting the markets. They they shouldn't be, but they are. Right? You know, they they should be they should be working independently from each other and having their own markets, but they don't. So people are flooding either out of bonds and into market, or they're getting out of markets and into bonds. And and this seems to be this this path. And it's all dependent on you know what the what the fed is going to say today you know i mean whether or not hey markets look good it looks like you know jobs are growing great so we're going to continue raising interest rates oh man worst day in a long time maybe we will back off on raising interest rates it's a, it's a different story every day okay peter in the in the um peter from sydney who will be later on the show asked do you see the united states going back into qe anytime soon um I, I do see him going back into QE, not necessarily soon. I think probably the Fed is going to wait for the pain to be more than people can bear. He's um, saying two years. They, He's giving it two years, in about two years. That, that would seem reasonable. I think that would be reasonable, you know, that uh, that in two years that we're going to have some pretty economic stress going on. That's to the point that, you know, they demand the Fed do something about it. You know, the Fed is mandated too. you know, they're they're mandated to to deal with employment and, and some some other issues. So, like, as long as these you know, these certain indicators aren't triggered, then they're not going to do anything, right? They're because they're, you know, they're kind of forced to by their systematic rules. Now, they do have policymakers in the background who can change these policies at any time. But, you know, they keep saying it, they're data dependent, you know. So, yeah, once the once everything starts kicking in and, and starts proving, you know, and saying, here's the data for you, then they'll then they'll probably start kicking in the quantitative easing again. But, you know, they're, they're loaded right now. They're loaded. Their ba- balance sheet is just loaded with the with with you know with these bonds right now that they're trying to trying to offload at what 50 billion dollars a month or something like that and they want to kick that up 
it's it's not going to be an easy task to do. And they and so that's where the pain is going to be felt as they're trying to get rid of all this stuff so they can deal with the next recession. I got a question here from Kevin Franklin from London, England, or sorry, Manchester, England, says uh, uh, JP Morgan has announced several hours ago that their chart, charts are showing a blistering stock market rebound headed in the next quarter. What do mm-hmm. you think? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, you know, I see these guys, these analysts, they come out every day and they'll talk, you know, you'll find ones that say that the market's going to be ripping and roaring and crazy. The other ones will say that it's going to tr- crash on you. Honestly, um, you know, I, I like I said, I'm keeping my eye on those interest rates. Um, you know, the Fed is, I think that's probably going to be the indicator. If this guy has some inside knowledge that he thinks that the Fed is going to, you know, stop the selling of those bonds and maybe, you know, try and actually do some bond purchases or something like that and start flooding the money, he might be very well right. It might be a ripping and roaring market after that. And it, you never know. It may not even take that much effort out of the Fed to do that, you know, to, to change the market sentiment around. Is it going to work? You know, well, probably not. I mean, it isn't working right now, so I doubt it'll work again. <laughs> okay, I got another question here from uh, my man, my man P- uh, Peter from Sydney, Australia. He says, Michael Pento says that QT will finish in the middle of 2019 as, hold on, I'm trying to open this whole uh a QE about two years. Uh, 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 Pinto. Okay, let me start. Over. Michael Pinto says that QT will finish in the middle of 2019 as the 50 billion monthly pain will be too much for the market to bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just kind of what I was saying there. So, yeah, Michael, Pen- I mean, that guy, he's pretty smart. I like that, Michael. Um, what is Pinto? How do you say his name? Pinto? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he, I've listened to him quite a bit and I really like him. Um, and I, I think the. He might be a little early on that forecast, in, in my opinion. I think that might be a little quick, um, but you know he's a, quite a bit smarter than I am. Um, I think that honestly, that uh, I think the Fed is probably going to try and unload as much of those balance sheets as they can, and I think they'll probably try and carry it through through 2019. Um, you know whether that actually works or not, I don't know. But that, that's that's kind of what I see, and the only reason, again, the reason why I think that is because I'm trying. I, I, I would think that if I was them, I would want that ammo. I would want I would want to be able to be able to purchase more assets and to be able to to be able to drop the interest rates again. And, and they can't really do that right now. So that's why I think that it's going to continue on for a little while, you know, into the future until they have until they can at least get close to that ability, you know. Okay. Okay, guys, we got the uneducated economist here. If you're just tuning in, we got people tuning in all the time. Uneducated economist. He's at two thousand six hundred and nine. Let me refresh that and see if it went up. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for subscribing. Oh yeah, really you went up. I think like seven or eight subs right now. Guys, please <laughs> right support on, guys. the Thank uneducated you. economist. He's going to be giving giveaways on his channel once in a while. Some free shirts. I saw that that shirt you got made. That looked pretty cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? My family got me this shirt here. The uneducated economist. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, check, yeah. He, he's got some really good videos, guys. I, I like the video. I was watching the video today right here uh, going over some of the coins that you went and yeah. some of the paper currency that was backed by silver and that wasn't backed by silver. I was watching mm-hmm. that today. That was really good video. Very, very intelligent, very upbeat, very to the point. You know, uh, you. a lot of these people ramble on too much and it just it, they don't they don't I mean, they, I guess they want to overshow or overstate what they want to say. You just get to the point and you tell people so it makes absolute sense. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? You know. Guys, please support his channel, Uneducated Economist. He's at 2612. Let me just copy the link on his channel for you guys and I'll put it into the the comment section. And hopefully he'll be live streaming soon. Yeah, that might be something I might get into here pretty soon. I really enjoyed doing this. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I need you. I need you to do start doing this, so then we could. Uh, I could be on your show. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not really good. I'm. I'm. I'm a little bit better at maybe engaging in conversation and asking questions and watching where things are headed. I'm not really super educated uh, myself. I mean, I, I barely have a high school education. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that's um, mad. But I got a question here from Low Roller Scratcher, handheld jo- – okay. If stock market crash uh, in worldwide, do you think people move their money into cryptocurrencies? 
Um, yeah, yeah. I think that during a during a heavy economic run like that, it, cryptocurrencies will definitely uh, definitely start playing a part. And you know, a good a good example is that just look to where you know around the world where you have economic crises happening right now, Venezuela and Cyprus and all these places where you had these huge economic turmoils happening. Bitcoin immediately was was taking off in these countries. They they started using it, you know, because it was basically a currency that everybody could get to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah, if I see an economic crisis in the future, you know, or if there was one, I definitely see cryptocurrencies playing a huge part in that. Um, you know, with that being said, on it, it it's it's hard to do, it's really difficult to to try and wrap your head around which one is going to be a good one because there's you know a lot of them out there. Um, so, you know, I try and look at some of the projects that they're doing, you know, and if their project is kind of geared towards dealing with a currency as itself, then then those ones will probably do OK during the economic crisis. You know, yeah. if it's you know, if it's something that's geared towards, you know, I don't know, one of the like gaming or something like that, then, you know, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> my my favorite my favorite is BitConnect. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I love that guy, man. That guy was so funny. Uh, what's his name again? What's his name? Jose something? Oh, man. I wish I could. I can't remember right now. Um, but, yeah, he was. He. I just loved his enthusiasm when he was up on the He truly believed it. Good Lord. Okay, let me like. Hey. Okay, I got it right here. Hold on. We're going to put hey. it on the channel, guys. Hold on. Oh, let me just uh, put this up here. Carlos Matos. Yeah, that's another That's kind of, you know, that's that's a Portuguese last name, and it kind of scares me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he doesn't look like a Portuguese. Okay, here we go. Hey, hey. Yeah, here he is. Hey, hey, hey. What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what's up, 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 <laughs> and then he talks about how he got seven grand and it's like yeah. oh my god so you doing this all for seven large jesus jesus yeah. he, he probably ruined the rest of his life no one's gonna take him serious yeah 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 unfortunate um you know i mean that's just you know that's just the case when people will kind of fall into this idea of, of quick and easy money and it's just you know i mean yeah some people do it but it's 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 obviously it's not there you end up losing everything you own you know when you do something like that um you know if i was to give any kind of warning out there for people when it comes to these cryptos is like you know i mean please have a level head about it and you know buy cryptos as a knowledge thing you know i mean that's what i did i mean that was kind of like when i would put money towards cryptocurrencies it was it was because i wanted to gain my knowledge in cryptos i wanted to learn more about them and so that was kind of like my pay to to learn and then i you know i get some reward i get some cryptos that i get to play with and you know i get to spend them with my buddy who uh, does computer services for me so i do get to spend some cryptos too every once in a while that's good that's good yeah. any final words um you know, man, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you for, for bringing me on your show, and thank you for uh, supporting my channel. Um, you know, thank you, everybody who is subscribing to my channel. Um, you know, I appreciate it. I, I never would have thought that uh, this channel would have gotten this popular or, you know, or gone this far. So, you know, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. I know you don't know this, but I'll tell you right now that I've been plugging your channel every week for the last two months. I see that, man. I see I see you mentioning my, my, my channel on your videos, man. And, you know, it touches me every time you do that. I really appreciate it, dude. <laughs> well, because it's because it's worth it. You're worth it, right? And you have, you're a hard worker and you, yeah, you're a good, you're a very good person. You got a good soul. Thank you, man. Thank you. And yeah. I appreciate it, man. I think I thank you for all the hard work you're putting in as well. You know, you're dedicated to doing this and, uh, you know, and, you know, this is this is grand, man. You're you're doing good, and you know, I'm pretty, I'm glad to be part of your team. You know. Yep. I'm gonna get some. I'm uh, gonna probably pick up a sweater like that. What does it have on your arm? Oh, it's the it's the manufacturer of the sweater. So I don't want to like give you any labels or anything like that. Oh, okay, okay. So they actually know, advertise a bit on your. What's that? They advertise a bit on your on your on your thing, so they get a bit of uh, you know, a little bit of recognition on their end too. Yeah, um, I don't know, because to be honest with you, I'm still learning a little bit about the, how the copyrights and stuff like that kind of work and, and different things. So, yeah, I'm still I'm like I'm actually I'm going to call on you for some of that information too to help me out, you know, kind of mm -hmm. get my YouTube channel in the right way if you if I could. You know? Yeah, maybe set up a small eBay store too. Yeah, sounds good. Man. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Well, Simon, thank you for so much for joining us from your busy schedule. I hope you have a great Saturday night. And man, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, you'll see us in the comment section, and you'll see a lot of us in your in your comment section and uh, and subscribing to you and supporting you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, and thank you uh, to all your subscribers and everybody who subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, Simon. Peace. Bye. Peace. So, guys, that is Simon, uneducated economist. Great channel. Great channel. Lots of really good videos. Gets a lot of views on his videos. Uh, very good positive comments. Lots of good feedback. Let me move the Astoria, Oregon from here for an, so we could get another guest on.